the Icons of Real Estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from top producing icon agents? Ready to skyrocket your business? This podcast is for you. Tune in every week and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your business. From $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Welcome to the Icons of Real Estate. I'm Tim Calloway. We have a very special guest for you today, the founder and CEO of Alliance, Ben Reinberg. Ben, how are you? I'm great, Tim. Thank you very much for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. I look forward to adding a lot of value to your audience. Hey, I appreciate that. So, you know, a little bit, I did a little bit of due diligence uh, on your company before, you know, we, we didn't, haven't had the opportunity to meet, but I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, you guys invest in what seems, if, I, if I'm not, you know, misunderstanding, uh, primarily in medical office buildings. Um, tell me a little bit how you got started. You know, what's the story? I'm sure, I'm sure uh, listeners want to hear it. Well, when I was between about 23 and 24 years old, I got started in commercial real estate. Uh, Tim, I've always been a principal. What that means is I've always been the guy in the line, the owner, not a broker. The right. bucks always stop with me, even since I was a young man. That's how I got started. And in Chicago, where I'm from, that's where I was born and raised. We have a large industrial market and office market. We're one of the largest cities in the United States. And with that being said, there's a lot of opportunities in commercial real estate. So I decided to start focusing on my career on office and industrial. Then I got into the retail. So when I first started, I syndicated my first deal when I was 24 years old. It was an industrial deal in the Chicago area. I uh, bought it, sold it for a 3X multiple and did very well. And that launched me. And then we ended up building over 10 million square feet of office and industrial around the country, syndicating hundreds of properties, commercial real estate properties throughout the United States. Uh, back then when I was younger, it was more of a regional local business. And then uh, as I aged and progressed, it became more of a national uh, business. And now commercial real estate is a global business. So we decided out of my 28 plus year career, Tim, to focus 17 years ago on medical properties and three and a half years ago on veterinary properties. So we are experts in office, industrial and retail, but we focus now on medical office. It's a large focus in our portfolio. We still have assets in the other three sectors that I mentioned, and we just launched a brand new fund uh, for the medical office space, which is doing really well. I'm really excited, and we just have a fabulous company. I have a leadership team that basically runs the company. They have 200 plus years of of experience in in, in commercial real estate and business, and I'm very blessed. I'm talent. I have wonderful people that work at Alliance, my company. They're extremely talented. Uh, a lot of them are smarter than I am, which I'm very grateful for because they, they carry the water for me at times and, right. and I appreciate it and I can't do it without them. So we have wonderful, talented people and we're growing and we have three offices now around the country and I sit in Newport beach, uh, my headquarters are in Chicago, that's where we're from our company and it's still there. And then we have an office in Florida and Tampa. So. Uh, that's what we do. We own and manage medical properties uh, throughout the United States. That's our focus. Fantastic. So let me ask you, um, you know, I, I ask this question when I when I talk to uh, individuals that are buying properties. I, are, are you regional as far as your properties or uh, is it nationwide? And, and how do you find the property? How do you vet the properties? Well, it's nationwide where we focus, Tim is we have specific criteria that we look for when we go out to the marketplace to acquire. And I call it the box. When okay. a property fits in our box and we acquire it, if, you know, if we could work out, uh, you know, an arm's length transaction with the seller. And where we focus our efforts are in the Southeast, the South, the Southwest, some of the plain states and parts Mountain West, as well as parts of the West Coast. We don't do as much business in the Midwest and the East Coast. And there's a reason behind that. For medical properties, we look for population growth. 
good healthcare markets, pro, pro, pro business, and really uh, areas that have great foundations for, for medical office spaces. And so take where you live in Florida, we do a lot of business in Florida, and we've done that for a long time. And we knew that because Florida, we've always seen population growth. And over the last four to five years, we've seen significant population growth. So it's an area that we focus on. We have an office in Tampa for a reason there. We have staff there. And so that's what we do. That's where we acquire properties. But to answer your question, how we find deals, I've been doing this a little bit shy of 30 years. So it's a marathon business, Tim. When you've been doing it as long as I have, well, what ends up happening is people know you close. When you have a great track record like my company Alliance does, and we do what we say we're going to do, and our words are bond, and you have great core values, our core values in our company are transparency, integrity, consistency, and expertise. And when you market that to the marketplace and people know that, Tim, when we're going to put something on their contract, we're going to close, uh, it's an opportunity cost equation for us. It's our brand. So people know when you do business with Alliance, you're going to get someone that's going to lead the process that has a vast amount of experience shepherding deals through to closing and closing deals. And because of that, it's just a natural osmosis that people bring us opportunities. We do a lot of marketing. We have a lot of relationships, deep rooted relationships with the brokerage community in our space, commercial real estate, especially the medical office uh, investment sales brokers out in the marketplace. But also, you know, tenants uh, find us deals too. So yes. when you're in business long enough and you grind long enough and you act with integrity and you keep your word and your word is your bond, well, guess what? Naturally, things happen. You know, the real estate, what I call the real estate gods reward you for right. the hard work, the perseverance, right. showing up, being, uh, being genuine, being authentic. And because people always ask me like, well, most people don't last in the business as long as you do, Ben. How do you do that? Yeah. It's really the core values. It's bringing in people that are extremely talented. It's being resource rich, Tim. These are all the little things that go a long way. And it doesn't happen overnight. People think you snap your fingers and you buy one deal and you make millions of dollars. No, it's a marathon business. It takes time. Uh, you have to be focused. You have to show up. Uh, you have to have integrity. And you got to give 120%. And you got to work and focus on the times you don't want to go to work. You know, it's kind of like I, I enjoy working out. I'm, I'm big into physical fitness. Mm -hmm. And there's days where I show up to my trainer and I don't want to be there. Right. I mentally right. I say, hey, I'm going to crush it today. Okay. I, meant, I create this emotional state that I'm here for a reason. I'm here to improve my health. I'm here to build muscle. I'm here to live a long, healthy life. That's why you're here, Ben. So let's go. And I mentally tell myself that. But at the end of the day, there's days where I'm tired. You know, I might have business there the night before. I wake up really early. I get up somewhere between usually 4.30 and 5 o'clock in the morning every day. And I'm ready to go at it. Well, I'm tired at times, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a 52 year old young man. I'm not the same kid I was 30 years ago. Right. And so my, it's different. My metabolism's different. My mind's different. But at the end of the day, what's great about our business, Tim, is that it's, you, it's like wine. When I age, I get better. Okay. Right. I'm more clear. I make decisions faster. I can get through deals quicker. And so when we're looking at all the deals we look at and we look at tremendous amount of deals every week to make offers on the experience we have in my company in addition to myself goes such a long way to make great decisions but also what people forget about is the type of returns that we generate for our investors from that experience that's why people invest in alliance and part of it tim is we know how to solve challenges when you know how to solve challenges in the commercial real estate space you add a lot of value to every to go back to how we find deals because we can kind of clean off the hair in deals so to speak right. or the challenges that go on or we know how to deal with challenges even after we own a property well guess right. what brokers knows you know how to close investors know that you know how to protect the downside and protect their capital and it's the little things 
that go a long way that produce success and big results. And that's, that's a big statement is because how you do the little things, if I could give anyone advice out there in the ether is it's how you do the little things will determine the big events that happen in your life. It's those small habits you create. It's showing up, it's being focused, it's, it's caring. You know, excuse my language, but when you can give a shit about people and care right. about what you're doing, it goes a long way throughout the process. And it's been one of the staples in my care in my career. Um, I have empathy for people. OK, I care about people. I want to give back and help them. And so I mentor a lot of people in our business. I don't charge them. Um, now, obviously, with my personal brand growing and you could see the icon, the Ben Reinberg, I own it podcasts I have, we will be monetizing. We're going to create content so I could start teaching commercial real estate, which is my next life, is that I want to give back, Tim. I want to do things that folks that were older than me, I felt didn't really teach the business, weren't right. really into holding hands and mentoring. Mentoring wasn't as big back then like it is now. And I figured I can give back and serve and help people and offer all the value that I've learned over the past three decades in this business to really make an impact on people, to maybe change someone's life and his his or her legacy behind them. And so I feel that's really important and that's where I'm going. And that's why it's so important to me as this personal brand and building it because it creates a, uh, a launch pad to really start helping people and understand who I am and the value I can offer out into the world. Man, that's inspiring, Ben, for sure. Uh, you know, two two interesting things of note. Um, you know, th th there's a lot there. Uh, in, in you know, your your reputation obviously when when looking for deals precedes you. So I think that that's got a, a lot to do with it. Uh, but also, I I do remember the day I woke up and I developed that for others mentality, right? And it it's a life changing event, right? I mean, you know, as, as opposed to the dollar chasing mentality that I think a lot of people, when you were saying, oh, I talked to a lot of people and they go, oh, so many people fail. What makes you different? Well, that, I mean, part of it is that is when I wake up in the morning, I'm not thinking about chasing a dollar. Uh, and I'm thinking about a for others mentality and it could be my own family. It could be extended family and it's total strangers. But I think that's a big deal. And I hear that resonating when, you know, you were telling that story. Um, well, and also to add to what you're saying is that with your audience is that, you know, it's okay to fail. Yeah. You're sure. going to fail. Not every deal is going to be perfect. Not every negotiation is perfect. W what I look at in life is when you have failures or challenges, how do you respond? That's the person that I look for. That's the person I invest in. That's what's important to me. That's who I become. Okay. I don't get down if I fail or I have a challenge. I say, okay, what did I learn from this? How do I improve from it? How do I get better? Or are there resources that I have to bring in because maybe I'm just not talented enough or I don't have the knowledge? And I'm big into that. One thing I'm outstanding at is becoming resource rich. If I don't know something, I, I'm vulnerable. I I don't know. I don't I don't understand how to do this. Or who can I bring in to help me? And I think that's a really important point, especially if you want to get into real estate, especially commercial real estate, is there's so many variables that you have to get your arms around and you have to get your arms around different markets. And so you have to leverage into talent, especially people that are boots on the ground that either work for us or that are resources of ours at Alliance. It's so critical that you could be vulnerable and say, you know what, I need to open myself up I need to be vulnerable and tell people I need some help. And here's one thing I could assure you that I've seen my career and also my colleagues and some of the other icons that I know in the business that are older than me as well, is that they've learned and they taught me, I've realized myself throughout my career, is that when you can be vulnerable and you can bring in resources, you grow faster, you make more money and you create wealth at a faster pace. And I'm really proud of that because it takes a person to say, you know what? Everyone always puts up this house of cards, right? I'm really successful, I'm this, I'm that. But that's not really what it's about. It's more about where, where do you need help to get a deal done? Where do you need resources to protect your investors or to protect your downside and your risk? 
you can't do that by yourself. In this business, you need a lot of resources and a lot of people to help you get to where you want. I didn't get to this point in my career by myself. I right. have a, I, I have a, I have like a, a declaration of independence list of people that if I really sat down for like five hours and just documented who was part of my career, it would be hundreds or thousands of people that have touched me. You know, I look at my Rolodex and I have probably over 60,000 contacts in my phone just through the years of developing relationships that I don't keep in touch with everyone, but all right. these people somehow touched me in some facet to be able to help me uh, solve a challenge, create success, taught me something. And so I become really into personal development uh, over the last handful of years. And I realize that it stemmed from the foundation of being vulnerable and wanting to learn and wanting to get better. And I realized with technology moving so fast and the ability to control my mind and my body, I realized that I need help and I need to keep learning and progressing. So every day I'm constantly looking at improving myself. I strive to be the best. Um, my goal is always to be the best commercial real estate investor in the world. Uh, that's always on the forefront of my mind. And I figure out how do I do that? Well, it starts with me, Ben Reinberg. Right. I got to be the best version of myself or else everyone else in my company or all the resources around me won't shine. And so I have a responsibility that I personally take and I take it really serious. So when I spend countless hours, not only at work, but also after work or before work, working on myself, I not only do that for myself, but I also do that because I want to create a legacy for everyone that works at my company or everyone that I touch as well. And that's something that's important to me is that's something I always realize is that, you know, there's saying seek to understand before being understood. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as if you give first, everything else will take care of itself. And that's kind of been my mantra throughout my life is when I network, I like to give referrals. I like to help people. And so to get back to your question about why deals come to us, it's because I give. It's yeah. because uh, I'm easy to talk to. There's a lot of people that can pick up the phone and call me. I'm not your typical founder CEO where I hide behind, you know, an assistant or, right. you know, back then it was a secretary. You know, it was a gatekeeper. I don't have a gatekeeper anymore. I used to. I used yeah. to, but I don't anymore. So. I have people out of the woodwork that will call me and just want to talk about commercial real estate. So uh, that's a little bit about us and what we do and, and yeah, how I we do. It. Yeah, I, I definitely love it. Uh, so many things you say resonates, you know, so, so well and so strong. I was thinking about when you mentioned Rolodex, you and I are the same age, by the way, and I'm thinking about Rolodex, you know, and I, I was like, yeah, I've had the same phone number since 2007. And I don't array, I don't get rid of anybody on it, right? Even if, even if they've, well, I hate to say this, some of them have passed away. Sure. And, but, I, but, you know, it's, it's my way of keeping that connection with that person. And, and it actually brings back memories, contacts, whatever it might be. And my wife always says, why don't you clean that up? You know, you've got thousands of names on it. And I go, because I don't want a giant Rolodex on my desk <laughs> this big that if I need something in Southeast Louisiana, where I used to live, uh, you know, I, I know who to call, right? And and so it's interesting you said that because it, I think if you're transparent and that type of person that gives back that Rolodex or phone, whatever you, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, it's a euphemism for just who you are and how far your reach is. And that I think that's fantastic. And, and I want to give, I want to give a piece of advice about that because I think it's really important. People are so worried about, well, if I give this referral, mm -hmm. how is it going to impact me? Instead of saying, how can I help this person? And I am so powerful and so great at what I do. I'm not worried about competition. My only competition is myself. Ben yeah. Reinberg is my biggest competitor. Right. Every single day I have to deal with my own demons and battle myself every single day. That's my competition. If I have enough confidence, and I'm good at what I do because I'm outstanding at commercial real estate. Why do I worry or care if I give a referral to someone? Right. How is that going to impact me? It's not going to change my life. Right. It might change that person's life. It might help them. And guess what? When I help them, 
and I need them for something where maybe they have an expertise or a resource I don't, well, guess what? I'm at the front of the line in their mind because right. they're like, Ben gives me, he needs help. I'm going to jump through hoops. I'm going to answer his phone. You know, right. one thing I am outstanding is people answer my call. And that's because of how I've conducted myself through my career. And that's just, if you're young and you're getting started, that to me is really where you want to be. That's who you want to be. You want to be giving referrals. You want to help, even though you might not have money at the time, or you might be struggling to learn. If, if you create that mantra and that mindset, I can assure you it will create success over time. If you're willing to focus, you're willing to show up, you're willing to be persistent, and you're willing to commit. Commitment is a really hard thing for people. I've had to learn two years. I've had to take a step back and say, what does that really mean to me in business and, and in life? Because in business, it's like, okay, I show up, but am I really committed? What am I doing during the lines of the hours of the business day? What am I, am I goofing off? Am I going to run errands? Am I focused? How committed am I to be the best at what I do? Right. And if you want a great exercise that people can use in your audience, one of my mentors taught me this and I did it for a year, Tim. Imagine doing what I'm about to tell you for a year. I documented, okay, every 15 minutes of my day, Ooh. Monday through Saturday when I worked, because I work Saturdays, and I don't really as much anymore, but I still do a little bit, is Monday through Saturday, I would document every 15 minutes. I would document if I drank alcohol, how many drinks did I have? Did I work out? I would go through my day because then I would see like, okay, Ben, where are you screwing off? Where are you not being committed? And so people say, well, why am I not successful? Well, look at yourself in the mirror and, and document right. what you do during the day. And that will answer your question real quick. Yeah. Why? Okay. Right. You could develop any resources you want in the world now, especially with the internet, it's out there. But if you're, but if you really want to be successful and wildly successful, you have to commit, you have to be focused. You got to be persistent. It's that desire. You know, if you ever read the book, um, uh, I'm reading it right now. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, it's from 19, I think it's 27. Uh, the secret was based off the book before it. So it's with, um, uh, hold on. I'll tell I read you real, the secret. I'll tell you real quick. It's on my uh, phone here and you can, you can, uh, people can listen to it if, if they want. I'm actually listening to the audio book about it. It's, uh, oh, it's think and grow rich by think Napoleon Hill. Yeah. So, sure. so I've read that book a few times yeah and it's been a while and i said you know i think i want to go back and listen to it so when i'm driving i listen to it and it goes back the reason why i brought that up was it goes back to my point of that desire that hunger that showing up that being present that knowing who yourself is and, and your authentic self and and really representing that out into the world and all these things gravitate and come out of that book if you've never read that book, whether you're in real estate, commercial real estate, any type right. of industry, and you're listening to this podcast, it's a great book because it really shows you what icons back in the early 1900s did to create success. Right. And a lot of it is they didn't give up. They right. didn't believe in, okay, well, I failed, so I'm just gonna stop. They knew what their mission is. They knew what their purpose is. And they had this strong desire and belief to say, I'm going to go out and get it. And that's kind of been the story behind my career is that when people doubt me or people say I can't do something, it fuels me. Sure. It fuels me in a way saying I'll do it and I will do it. And fine. I always like to have anchors that fuel me. Okay. And there's been people in my life and I'm sure in your audience. Okay. You probably have people that anchor you that, question you or doubted you it could be your parents it could be your brothers your sisters family aunts uncles friends colleagues um there's always people out there that are going to doubt you and a lot of it stems from the root of it is they're jealous or they're trying to help you some of them because they feel that you know they're worried about you but at the end of the day when you get down to the root reason it's because they're jealous because they didn't have the guts to do what you're going to do 
And I see that there's always one in, there's always, you know, Ed Milet says it best. There's always one in the family. I'm right. the one. Right. He's the one in his family. There's that one guy that right. takes that risk. That one guy that believes in, in the entrepreneurial spirit. The one guy who believes in his destiny and goes for it. Well, when you have your family and your friends and all these people around you that don't have that mindset or mentality, it's a challenge. They're going to doubt you. So how do you deal with it? You have to put the blinders on and say, hey, this is who I am. I'm my authentic self. I'm not going to let anyone talk me out of this. And that's how I dealt with life when I was in my 20s. I had a chip on my shoulder. And not that, excuse me, that's a healthy thing or not. But right. that's who I was. I always had that chip. And that chip, I think, fueled me to become who I am. And I look yeah. back and, and it, 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 it really helped create the success I've been able to create today. Yeah, I, I can name quite a few athletes, leaders, uh, pioneers in business that had that same chip. And it's, that chip has led them far. So it's how you utilize it, right? It's how you mm -hmm. use it to drive you forward. Well, we're kind of winding down here, Ben. Um, you know, we didn't really get a chance to talk. I mean, maybe we can we can have another discussion at another time. I would love to do that. Uh, but I always allow my um, my guests to kind of have the last two minutes to kind of take us out and tell us whatever's on their their heart, their mind, their soul. And it you know doesn't have to be about business. Um, you know, anything that you want. But take us out, Ben. Uh, well, one, if you want to follow me, feel free to go to BenReinberg.com. Uh, my company is AllianceCGC.com. That's CharlieGeorgeCharlie.com. If you want to learn about commercial real estate, if you are an accredited investor and want to invest in our medical property fund, we generate great returns, mid-20s IRRs in our career in medical properties. Uh, it's a great vehicle if you want to diversify. I invest as well. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, really love what we do and we're passionate about it. Um, if you are looking to learn about commercial real estate and learn how to do what I do, I'm going to be coming out with content in a university eventually where I will be teaching it. Uh, just continue to follow BenReinberg.com. I am on all social media platforms, whether it's TikTok to Instagram, Facebook, you name it. Uh, behind me, you can see my icon. This is my podcast studio. It's Ben Reinberg. I own it. We talk about how health, wealth, relationships and business, how they all come together as one to create success. We have wonderful guests on the show. And uh, that's what I that's what I have going on. And and Good and what's stuff. happening. I now live in California. I'm born and raised in Chicago. Uh, still, my heart is always in Chicago. Mm -hmm. But uh, I love what I do. And looking forward to really serving and adding value. I mean, one of the things, Tim, that spurn me about creating content and teaching people about commercial real estate is I always felt that there was someone out there that were in my shoes when I was in my 20 that said, what if I can get into this business? Right. How would I learn? Who would teach me? And I always felt that if you had a mentor or a coach, and especially how sophisticated and complicated our business is, is that if you could have someone shepherd you through the process to shrink down that learning curve that we all go through in life. And just to be able to have someone to bounce ideas off of or a process or a system or something to help you. Well, I'm from Chicago and the area of Chicago and the South side of Chicago is a pretty rough area. A lot of violence, a lot sure. of crime. There's, there's, you know, we're the homicide capital of the world. Unfortunately, I have to say that it upsets right. me to say that. However, with that being said, what if there's some young man or woman, down in the city in the south side of chicago it says how do i get out of this environment what if i could allow them to use commercial real estate to get out of that environment right. and use it where they can create a legacy where maybe they have kids that have never went to college and they could be a first generation oh, college graduate how impactful would that be it only takes one person to change and so i figured with my knowledge and our resources how how wonderful would that be to help impact people's lives and to change people and allow them to learn a business that I love that produces wealth that people really find extremely sexy and attractive to do for a living. Um, that's how people look at our business. They see the big buildings, you know, take Chicago, my hometown. 
You go and you see the skyscrapers, you see great shopping centers, you see huge industrial buildings and distribution right. centers and multifamily buildings, great apartment buildings. And yeah. so you see all this and you say, well, how do you own that? How do you create wealth? How do you see, you know, the cranes popping up in the sky and, and, and the buildings being built and developed? How does that work? No one talks about it. No one teaches right. it. So I figured I can make a great impact by taking a young man or woman or the single mother who wants to get into business or someone else and give them some sort of knowledge or confidence or foundation or platform that they can grow and become their own person and build a legacy for themselves. And I feel that uh, it's, it, I haven't seen it really been done in our business and I feel I'm the right person to teach and do it. And it's something I'm looking forward to. So I'm really excited about it. That's something I'm working on and that's going to be up and running in 2023 and I'm really excited about it to share this with people. Ben, great stuff. Great sage advice and, and loved your story. Appreciate you being on the show. I look forward to catching up with you again next three, six, nine months. First of the year, maybe when uh, you come out with your new program, love to talk to you again, you know, see if we can't get that out to everybody. Uh, have right. a great week. Thanks for being on the show, Ben. All right. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate it. Have a good one.